Play literally anything else, it's going to be more fun. I'm not going to start with my usual spiel of asking you, do you want to play the role that does X? Because I know for a fact that you don't want to play this role, and I am telling you to actively not play this role. I'm someone who plays jungle as my main role, and I can tell you that in all honesty, mating support has been the worst experience I've had while playing League of Legends. I thought it would be easier because unlike in jungle, I wouldn't have to listen to four whiny babies, I just have to listen to one, but I was so wrong. Instead of having all of your hate evenly distributed through four of your teammates like in jungle, leading to an even distribution that keeps you somewhat sane, in support, you get to focus all of that hate into one person, and you're blamed if that one person isn't constantly made out to look like the coolest person ever, often times to your own detriment. Welcome to a terrible guide to League of Legends. Welcome to Summoner's Support is the role that you play when you decide that you want to have fun while playing League of Legends because everyone tells you how easy it is because every single support main is apparently elo inflated by some arbitrary amount because supports don't have to do anything in order to win the game. Then, you queue up for a few games of the role, and you realize that while some of the champions are indeed easier, this role is more miserable than being a top laner who absolutely stomped your lane opponent, but can't even touch the enemy ADC without being deleted, so it doesn't matter how you did, because you still lose. Due to how support is designed as a role, as well as the champions that find themselves within it, I think I agree with people when I say it has the smallest amount of personal responsibility, in the sense that I've had more games of support than any other role where I've won while doing absolutely terrible by every metric, and games of support where I've lost while doing absolutely amazingly by every metric. This culminates in the feeling of despair for most support mains because while yes, you can have those games where you get to sit back and relax while everyone does well, you'll also have those games where the tank gets caught and it's solely your fault because you're somehow the only person that can buy or place wards. It's like going to the toy store as a kid and having a 50% chance of getting the toy you wanted or a 50% chance of getting sucker punched by one of the employees. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the actual role and what makes it so different to the point that it becomes a wasteland for your mental health. In support, like in jungle, you have a specific starting item dedicated to your role. Since supports aren't supposed to take minions, this item is what allows you to get gold by either hitting enemy champions or executing minions below a certain health. In addition, this item upgrades throughout the game depending on how much gold it has generated in order to give you free wards to place down and give you an extra effect when fully maxed. Due to this way of getting gold as opposed to farming, you're going to end up the poorest person on your team. It's like Christmas morning and your brother opens opens up a brand new PS5 and you open up a brand new pair of socks. And this is before we get into the 2v2 nature of the lane as a support, where you're expected to do your best to keep your dumb fuck ADC alive for as long as possible and at any time they die, it'll always be your fault. ADC gets hooked by Blitzcrank? Why didn't you tank it? ADC gets CC chained by Leona because they have no cleanse? Why didn't you already have a Mikhail's at level 3? ADC gets comboed by the brand who's sick of having to deal with ADCs, you can be certain that it's all your fault. Not to mention, the fact that roaming as a support is now more expected than ever, especially due to void grubs, and 50% of the time the roam is great because your ADC is a glue eater that can't even exist without the need to int, and 50% of the time the roam is terrible because your top jungle and mid laner refuse to even acknowledge that you're roaming in the first place. Not to mention that no matter what you do to roam, the enemy support's roams will always be better no matter how obvious their ganks are and no matter how many times that you ping, and it will always be your fault. Another big obligation of supports is warding, because you get four of them to use every back, plus a control ward, which you better be buying, and you better understand that it's solely your responsibility to get and clear vision, and if your team doesn't want to walk with you to get vision in the area that the enemy team might be, then it's your fault for not having that vision there earlier. You see why people hate this role yet? And on top of all of the various tasks that you're expected to do more than any other role, you're also in control of making sure everyone else on your team looks as cool as possible and receive none of the credit. Your Vayne got a 1v5 Penta? Well, I'm sure that Soraka ult that you lent them meant absolutely nothing to it. Your Aurelian Soul just got an amazing 5-man ultimate that won you the team fight? Well, I'm sure your bait and subsequent CC of the enemy team as Nautilus had absolutely nothing to do with it. Your team just aced the enemy team at Baron? I'm sure your amazing Bard ult that set up a giant Wombo combo didn't actually help whatsoever. 
a lot of this ability for supports to do a lot for their team and get recognized for absolutely none of it while simultaneously being scrutinized for the smallest of mistakes is honestly worse than it is in jungle because at least there you can get your team to agree that it was jungle diff but i dare you to try and get your team to agree on support diff a lot of this leads a lot of support players into an interesting situation, but I'll get into that later when we talk about the different kinds of support champions. For now, let's talk about the dumbass that you have to deal with in lane. I mean, let's talk about the ADC. The reason why tensions between ADCs and supports are so high during your average game of League of Legends is because both of them will blame the other one for every single mistake that happens in lane, regardless of whose fault it actually is, and will blame them for things completely out of their control. The blaming for no good reason does happen more from ADC to support, and unfortunately as a support, you're in a really tricky situation, because without you, the ADC is going to die more often, and if the other lanes aren't doing too hot, keeping them alive may be your only win con because so many supports lack damage output because they traded it for crowd control or healing and shielding. Not to mention that since you're a support, you're not supposed to take gold from other lanes, and we all know the emotional maturity of most League of Legends players if they see the support taking minions, so if the ADC falls behind, you usually will too, as you won't have an easy access to gold or XP to become a carry. So, as a support, you're pretty much managing the emotions of a toddler that, even if you decide to roam, has the ability to pretty much define how your game is going to go. Roam top and get a double kill? Too bad, your ADC died 1v2 and now they're AFK. Accidentally take a cannon minion because you're trying to push the wave faster? Well, there goes your ADC's flash. And this is why a lot of supports follow a... darker calling. One that leads a support player down a path that leads to abandoning their humanity. One that makes you question, what really is the best form of crowd control? Until you only have one answer. Death. Yes, it's time to finally introduce the different types of support champions and why so many supports go down a dark path. There are four different support classes, each of them fundamentally playing the lane differently than the other three, and results in support having some of the most diversity in how you have to approach the early game compared to any other role, in my opinion. Firstly, you have the two most recognizable types of supports in Enchanters and Tanks. There is some diversity within these two types, but for the most part, you can split Enchanters into those that shield and peel, and those who heal and shield through all of your damage. For Tanks, you can split them between those who engage constantly and those who make your engaged useless, and every one of these four types of what you'd call probably a normal support have the same design philosophy max out utility while making damage as minimal as possible. Sometimes the design falls through and the hatred towards ADCs pushes some supports into being able to do more damage than their ADC for a patch or two, but that's the major idea. Then you have the two types of supports who have said, screw all of this supporting business, if I wanted to watch over an infant while I play a game of League of Legends, I would have called your mom back and given you a new baby brother. Mage and AD assassin supports, yes, I'm including Senna there because she usually builds lethality, are the support players who have had enough of their ADC making the lane absolutely miserable to play and are taking things into their own hands. These are usually characters that either don't need a whole lot of gold to function due to their base damage, or champions that buy super low gold items and it all works out because it doesn't matter what you do as an enemy support because their one and only job is to kill you and if you can't deal with that then you lose the lane. They're the carry now and they'll let you know that personally by either setting you on fire, poking you from 10 million miles away, engaging on you and bursting you, or basically being another ADC but with great utility. This is the final evolution of all support mains. When Soraka, Janna, Leona, and Nautilus are no longer able to get the job done, you evolve into something greater. Something that doesn't need to peel the weak and frail ADC in your lane. Because what greater crowd control is there than death? Thank you everybody so much for watching this video, mine has been Tarin, and I hope you enjoyed A Terrible Guide to Support. If you did, go leave a comment down below telling me which role you want to see A Terrible Guide about next, and while you're down there, go hit that subscribe button to be updated whenever any of my new content comes out, and go check out some of my other content like the other terrible guides on my channel. I will see you all next time. Bye bye!